So far in our Arizona series, we've met an array of amazing nocturnal reptiles and amphibians, but haven't yet had a chance to encounter one of my top targets in this area, the gopher snake. Okay, we are in totally different habitat than we've seen this entire trip. You can see that there is actually water here, probably because literally yesterday there was a big old monsoon that rolled through this area. Now, of course, you can see that life has sprung up all around this water, and what we're hoping is we can get the first diurnal snake of the trip. We've literally seen no snakes out during the day. We're going to be walking this, looking at these crags in the vegetation, especially in these shady areas by the water, and hoping to get lucky. Let's see what we can find. While searching for our target species, we spotted numerous species of lizards scampering amongst the boulders. Oh, I have a lizard. Whoa, scrub lizard. Holy, Scalopterus? I have no idea. Let's He's not it. fast let's though. Get let's get it, let's get it. Oh, oh. Hey, you gotta get to his left. Oh, oh he's going he's up, he's faster than you. He's Why aren't you moving, Ben? Are you gonna try to get him? <laughs> and after a few misses, we finally managed to catch one. Nice. This is the western fence lizard. Now at first glance, you might notice that this looks extremely similar to a species which I've already featured on the channel before, the eastern fence lizard. And they're visually similar, but because these western fence lizards live in a very different ecosystem than our easterns back at home, they have some really unique adaptations. And they actually get most of their moisture from the food they eat. Insects, spiders, and arthropods, really anything they can catch, they will try and eat and they actually have really proportionally long toes ended with these hook-shaped claws that allows them to access invertebrates, maybe up rocks or in trees that other lizards simply can't get to. Another thing that is crazy about the western fence lizards, western fence lizards and one other species of lizard out here have actually developed a natural resistance to the venom of the western black widow. So a bite from a western black widow would normally have enough potency to kill about 10 lizards of this size. But if a western fence lizard is bitten by a black widow when it's eating it, it'll actually experience minimal effects based on its body weight from that bite. One other really cool thing about this lizard is we get some insane sexual dimorphism between males and females. And just look at how beautiful this underbelly is. You can see there's these three blue patches of iridescent scales. And then also we have some yellow scales kind of under the arms and on that brow crest there. Typically, those bright colors act kind of like the antlers on a deer to tell other males, hey, I'm reproductively fit, stay out of my territory, and to advertise their fitness to female lizards. I think this is a really special species, and even though it is literally the most common lizard in this area, it's still a really important part of our ecosystems. But we didn't come here for lizards, we came here for snakes. Go for go for go for go for. Oh my gosh. Oh, dude, this is it right here. <laughs> no way. Hold up. Are you like a rat snake? Are you, is that you friendly? Dude, he's doing the little, he's doing the S. No, he's okay, he's okay. Oh, we're friends, we're friends. Oh, no, 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 not down there. Hold up, hold up. Oh man, yes, this is it guys. This is the gopher snake. This is a species that I have wanted to see for so long. So gopher snakes, they are primarily fossorial. Most of their lives are spent underground, but on a beautiful day like this with pretty mild temperature, and especially in an area where he has easy access to water, I bet there's an abundance of prey above ground as well. Now, gopher snakes are also some of the largest snakes that we get out here in the American Southwest. Gophers also have a very unique defensive posturing. It is almost identical to the defensive posturing of many of the rattlesnakes out here. So they'll kind of pick themselves up off the ground. They're gonna blow out a ton of air, make a really loud hissing sound. And a lot of times they will rattle their tails. Since they are mostly fossorial, they don't rely on their vision a lot. They have an incredibly keen sense of smell. And the main thing they're sniffing out is rodents. They're not rat snakes, they are pituophis. And all of those guys are fossorial rodent eaters for the most part. And they have no venom of any kind. These are extremely powerful constrictors, but they are still food for other animals despite their large size. So things like a California king snake or even mammals like a coyote would definitely prey on a gopher snake. And that means they are smack dab in the middle of our trophic pyramid, really helping to maintain the balance of lower trophic levels while also providing energy for those higher level consumers. You can kind of think of them like big fossorial rat snakes out here in the desert where there are no rat snakes. Gopher snakes are also pretty common in even developed areas because a lot of these developed areas 
provide great habitat for their main prey. So if you see gopher snakes around your property, it probably means there's one of two things, either good habitat underground or there's rodents, or more likely both. Even though they do get big and they can pop up unexpectedly, there is no reason to fear gopher snakes. You can see that even when handled, they are super docile. They just wanna go about their lives eating their rodents. And these guys are free pest control for you. They're literally cleaning up your property from all those nasty rodents. And they're also super easy to identify. You have this really elongated classic colubrid body and then this very distinctive dorsal blotching here. Oftentimes a dark brown on a yellow base color like we see here. These are definitely, I think, some of the most beautiful snakes out here in the American West. Such an iconic species and an animal that I have wanted to see out doing its thing for such a long time. Okay, this has been maybe my favorite animal encounter of the Arizona trip. I just love getting hands on with something, especially a big clooper like this. Unfortunately though, it's time to say goodbye. So we'll set him down and let him go about his day. Well, all right, bye friend. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.